Hey guys, in a minute. Hey guys, it's Audrey. From Tilly Tubular. And in a minute, there's going to be a how to herd sheep, I think. Dem yeah, dogs. No, how she no, how to get the goats in in the pen with using dogs. There are the goats over there. I hate these things. Believe it or not, when I'm working in the field, I don't have one of these on. <laughs> They're really cute. Okay everybody. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you, North Andover, for having us. I think this is maybe the I want to say 20th year, 20, 22nd year that Andy and I have done it. Anyone remember about, what, Andy, 10, 12 years ago when we were on Good Morning America here? They, Good Morning America actually came to the Sheep Festival and, on Monday and uh, did, a, did a thing. Anyway, so Andy and I are sort of a team. He shears and I work the dogs. And I work the dogs not to professionally entertain you as so much as to educate you. Um, I run a large farm. Andy just got through telling you he shears all over the Northeast. Um, and I can honestly tell you, especially with my advanced age, that I could not run my farm without these dogs. End of subject. I'll give you an example. You walk in, like we have pigs. You walk in among 12 or 15, 200 pound pigs with grain. <laughs> You better have a dog near you because they'll just knock you right up down. Or, for instance, we have several hundred sheep. When we go to feed the sheep, we can actually, and you'll see pictures here, we can actually line up the dogs in front of the sheep. I can bring out grain, pour it along the troughs. Nobody touches anything. I can walk out, call a whistle, the dogs leave, and the sheep go. Cattle, goats, pigs, ducks, sheep. So what I want to do today and so, many of you have seen this before. I have two requests of you parents, and that is one is to not touch the fence. Okay, and the reason is, no, no, I'm not being a jerk, is because it's normally electric and it's very flimsy. When it has 7,000 volts in it, nobody touches it. But right now, we've actually had a case many years ago where children were pulling the fence down, the sheep jumped out over their head. So if you don't mind just taking a step back and not doing the second thing, you're fine. But the second thing I would ask, believe it or not, not that you would ever do it, is don't clap. When I'm all done, if you want to do something, that's fine. Because when the dogs are working, you know, they're, they're not used to, you know, 50 people clapping when they put the sheep in or out. So let me get started. Um, I have four goats and I have Dorset sheep. You just watched Andy Shear one. By the way, if anyone's interested, those fleeces are available. Uh, I really don't want to take them back if you're spinners. Uh, we run several hundred Dorsets. Uh, we've had a little under 14,000 lambs born on our farm. And I take great pride in the fact that I help other people with good natural food. So we sell about you know, three or 400 lambs a year to local people. It's, um, it's you know, grass fed. It's as close to organic as you can get. I don't claim organic. And one of the ways we do this, not to bore you, but one of the ways to feed grass feed animals is to move them around a lot, right? You have to have a lot of pasture. Well, when you go to move sheep, you, you know, you need to have some control. You can't just shake a bucket and hope that they follow you. And usually if there's something better to eat over there, they're going to go over there. Better yet, when I'm walking down a road and I've got 100 sheep in the road and I'm going to a pasture a mile away and they see your vegetable garden, they say, you know what, let's stop for a snack right then and there. Do you know what a hundred sheep do to a vegetable garden in about 10 minutes? Black. <laughs> so the dogs are a way of moving animals and allows me to give you more grass-fed meat. All right? Okay, so the dogs, there are about 50 breeds of dogs that do either herding, guarding, or driving. Um, border Collies, which I'm demonstrating today, are absolutely, with no exception, considered to be the smartest dogs in the world, period. There's a border collie in Germany that has a vocabulary of 3,600 words. That's the equivalent of a six-year-old child. Why are they so smart? Because they were bred for their intelligence and not their looks. We have brown ones, black ones, black and white, tri-colors, long-haired, short-haired, doesn't matter. We don't care as long as they have that instinct. However, because they are so smart and because they are so intense, do not, and I repeat, 
do not get a border collie as a pet by itself. Not a good idea. There's a border collie rescue league in every single state. People get puppies, they get to be a year old, they say, okay, what do you want me to do? And well, you don't have anything for me to do. I'm gonna chase cars, I'm gonna round up kids, I'm gonna bite children, I'm gonna go crazy. If you're a marathon runner and you play soccer and all that, maybe. A border collie cross, that's good. But purebred border collie from a person like me, don't do it. I pride myself in selling these dogs to farmers, only to farmers. You get my, I think I have my chain hooked on my head. Sorry, I need my whistle, there. Can't do anything without my whistle. That's better. So, the border collies are never taught hand signals. The reason is, they move animals with their eyes. There are dogs that move animals with their mouth, barking, but border collies are quiet, and I like that, because when I move 100 sheep through town at five in the morning, nobody even knows I'm doing it. Nobody even knows they're there. Because they work frequently on the other side of the animal from me, we have to teach them clockwise and counterclockwise commands, never left and right. As they said, no clicker training, no hand signals. If I wanted the dogs to go clockwise, for instance, I would say, and counterclockwise would be, to walk in means to walk straight in on them, to get down is to stand, to slow down, to speed up, to come here, to get back. That is about six of 20 commands they know by whistle. They know about 60 commands. Nobody moved. Notice that? Nobody moved. Because the dogs are taught to only work when their name or their whistle is blown first. And I'll tell you what. Uh oh. Could be a bad battery, Andy. We'll see. I just bought it. The reason why this is true is if I am moving multiple dogs at once, okay? One dog might be going forward, the other dog might be going backwards, one dog might be going clockwise, the other one counterclockwise. So each one has to work simultaneously with the other. So instead of giving one command for one dog, I'm giving actually five commands for five dogs all at the same time. So, so let me first introduce you to them. And we have Bonnie. And Bonnie is uh, six. She's pregnant have puppies in about three or four weeks. I have a three-year waiting list from farmers only for these dogs. And then her daughter, Tate, lie down. Tate is just, uh, uh, she's just a youngster. She's going to be the loose cannon today because cause Tate is sure that her mother doesn't know how to do it. Tate's instinct is strong and is sure that she needs to help me out. Nellie, Nellie. Now, believe it or not, this dog is 14, and you watch when you see. She'll be doing five hours of demonstrating today, rounding up animals in the morning, and putting them away at night, and she's not tired. So, and then, <coughs> Dot, come here, Dot, Dot, come on, come on, right there. So, Dottie is also bred, she's seven, and I like to get a dog on my farm every four years. So, because it takes so long to train them. So I just, you know, because they last about, they're useful for maybe 15 years. They live about 17, thereabouts. Okay, so the sheep and goats, every animal has a different type of intensity in terms of working. All right, we call that pressure point. For instance, the pigs, we have to get right in the pig's face. We had a dog a couple of years ago called Pete, the pig dog, and he would actually jump on the back of the pigs and ride them and bite their neck to get them to go somewhere. Now, I'm in the business of selling meat, and you're not going to buy my meat if it's got a bunch of dog bites on it. So we teach the animals at a very young age. I have goats and sheep. So let's let's bring these guys over slowly. And I, the only dog I'm going to have to correct is possibly Tate. She's a little in front. Tate, come here. <laughs> Down. So I think I'm going to bring the sheep right over there. So I'm going to send one dog out counterclockwise. Bonnie, away. Oh my god. Steady. Hey, Bonnie. Get down. Right there. Bonnie, here. Come. Nope. 
Bonnie, come on. No, Bonnie, come here. Bonnie. <laughs> Bonnie, come on. Come here. Why not? No, Bonnie, come here. Come here. No, come here. Get down. She's a little hyper. She's been in the truck since four this morning. Away. There, lie down. Now, we sometimes put a dog down and sometimes we make them stand. If we're dealing with cattle, we want them to stand. But by lying down, those sheep have reached a comfort point. That's why they stop there. Away. They're down. But notice that that was enough to stop them from moving in that direction. If the dog, as, as we do these demonstrations today, there's going to be four of them, by the way. We're at 10, 30, 12, 1, 30, and 3. By the end of the day, the sheep are going to be what we call sticky. Now, by the way, those of you that are worried about that I'm being mean to these sheep, I'm not hurting them. They're teenage sheep. They deserve what they get. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, actually, that's very interesting. Let me just give you one little aside. Those sheep that Andy just sheared, we call those hoggets. And they're the equivalent of our human teenagers. Because when the lambs are born, and you'll see pictures in my album, the dogs are taught to never hurt them. The, the, the lambs can come right over to the dog and butt them, step on them, pee on them, poop on them. The dog won't do a thing because it could kill it in two seconds. What happens is those little lambs become teenagers, like our teenagers, and they have no respect for adults or authority or anything, and at that point, they have to be taught. Okay. Bonnie, look up there. So she's pretty much got them caught. That's it. Now, I'm gonna have her bring them right here. And believe me, these three dogs are what we call inactive dogs. Bonnie, walk up. Steady. Uh-uh. Bonnie, come on. No, no, Bonnie. Bonnie, Bonnie, there. Lie down, right there. Come. Down. Okay, that's a single shed. That's a single shed. And you notice, I actually told her to do that. Bonnie, come here. Out. Right there. Walk up. Down. Lie down. You notice that I, I had Bonnie pick out that sheep. And you notice that as soon as that sheep realized that none of the others were going, she went back because a sheep's only natural defense is other sheep. They know that if they are the only one there, they're in trouble because they're going to be dinner. But you also notice that when she did that, we didn't have to, we didn't have to bite them or anything. She just moved a little. Okay, so I'm going to bring the sheep right here. I'm going to bring them right, right on this thing right here. Oh, yeah, Once again, with one dog. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back. There. By the way, I'm speaking English now, so you can understand what I'm doing, because if I go... <whistles> fine. <whistles> there. Come on. Bunny, bunny, bunny. There. Drop it. Lie down. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Now that's shedding two of them. One of each. I can actually go along and shed different colors if you want. So now, we've got these sheep somewhat caught, right? And they're sitting there. Bonnie is what we call a safe distance away. Notice that the sheep and the goats are just far enough away that they feel comfortable. Yeah. And they're yelling because there are other sheep over there. But if I want to come over and say, slowly, and you never look at a sheep when you're going to catch him. Let's say I want to get that one. Now, I'm an old man, but you notice that by holding this, I can catch the sheep. And once I have the sheep's head, and you're saying, he's crazy, he's got his hand in the sheep's mouth. What kind of idiot is he? Guess what, people? There's no teeth here. Because a sheep is a grazing animal. And I'm better off holding it in its, by its mouth than I am holding it by the, its throat. So now I've got this sheep, and she weighs as much as I do. And I can just take her, and I'm not hurting her. Do you hear her yelling? And I can take and I can turn her head down. And I can pick her up easy, 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 easy. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Takes a minute to get them to calm. There. There. Okay. See? Good sheep. So now, what I would do is, if I was trimming their feet, or I wanted to check her udder out, whatever, 
I could do that and do what I need to do, and then I can let her go. She is number 2,076. As I said, easy girl. Okay, you can get up now. Let's try a go. Okay. Bonnie, lie down. Lie down.